Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. I'm very excited because I'm conducting my first giveaway ever. That's right, two years on YouTube and Instagram. This is my first giveaway ever. Today I'm doing a giveaway that's sponsored by my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. To enter, all you gotta do is follow me if you're not already doing that. That's at Mowers and Blowers and follow Lucas Oil Products. The one with the verified check at the end, then you'll know that's real. At Mowers Blowers, at Lucas Oil Products. Follow both of us, and you know what? Tag all the friends who want so that they can see this video, and they can enter too, and they can show their other friends if they want this stuff. Now, this is a good little sample box of what I plan on uh, giving away for free. That's right, free. Absolutely free. Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers again. Good morning. It's uh, Tuesday morning. Uh, I'm sorry, it's Monday morning. And uh, it's a rainy, gloomy day today here in Huntington, Long Island. Um, since I got back from vacation, I've been so busy picking up tractors. You know? Uh, I can't say no because three out of four were free. That's right. Free. Uh, anyway, and so uh, I have a battery in here, but I took it back out, put it in my car, uh, van to power the winch to get the LT1000 yesterday, so I got to put the battery back in here again, right? I got to figure out if the solenoid works. I do some multimeter testing to see the circuits and stuff and why it's not cranking when I have a battery, I have a key, turn it, won't crank, so it's got to be the solenoid or one of the safety switches are, are bad, you know? But unfortunately... I can't work on this today again. Why? I have more pressing issues in my house. So yesterday, the poo-poo sewer pipe. Yeah, I know. What are you gonna do? You gotta, you gotta take care of that first, right? Uh, was kind of leaking. So I need to go buy a uh, one of those big long clamps. You know, the big clamps for the big thick pipes. You know, I have to do a whole patch. You know, uh, I should. I should really replace the entire pipe, but if I can get it to work for a few years, you know, I'll I'll get a plumber and do it professionally some other time. But uh, right right now, I, I can fix it with a with a patch, you know. So why well, go to Home Depot to buy that stuff for my plumbing problem? Um, so I can't work on this today. But then while I'm at Home Depot, I've been meaning to get some of that quick color 98 cent black spray paint. So I, because I ran out, so I can spray some black decks, you know, just to get it uh, nice and, you know, uh, presentable. Uh, a lot of the decks are black, but uh, they're like different colors and stuff. So I want to get some black spray paint. I want to get some mustard color cut, uh, Cub Cadet yellow, because while I, I like this hood, I'm going to keep this hood. This yellow doesn't match this yellow on the uh, body of the uh, lawn tractor. So I want to get the somewhat closer because this is a lighter color yellow I wanted to get like a mustard color cup cadet color so I can spray the body of this thing right um, I could also use some red spray paint too uh, and also since I'm at Home Depot I was thinking I really need to get um, LED bulbs for my garage because I always have a lighting problem you know and so because I have a lighting problem I want to I want to switch out those lights they're fluorescent, I think they're T12 tubes, you know. I've got four of them. I want to switch them out with uh, 4000K LED T12 bulbs. But I have to disable or bypass the ballasts in those light fixtures, you know. And I was watching some YouTube videos on how to do that. And when I come back from Home Depot, I'm going to I'm gonna show you guys how to do that too. So if you want to uh, replace the... Um, fluorescent T12 bulbs in your garage or whatever, right? Uh, I'm going to teach you how to bypass it once I figure it out myself. And then put some uh, probably 40 watt T12 LED 4000K bulbs in there. People tell me that it's 50% uh, more energy efficient, uses 50% less electricity, it's much brighter than fluorescent bulbs, and they last longer. So it might be kind of expensive, but in the long run, it's worth it, right? 
So lighting's always been a problem in my garage. That's why I videotape a lot outdoors because it's a lot clearer for the camera, you know? You get a better picture when you film outdoors in the natural sunlight, you know? But sometimes on days like today, man, you, it's just not feasible to be working outside. So uh, I wanted to get some good lighting for the garage. Um, I got something for Christmas that was supposed to help me with the lighting indoors. I'm going to show you what, it, what it's like now. So this is my tripod that I've been using since I started. Well, not since I started, but recently. I've got my jumper pack on here onto a USB coiled around my thing. There's my, um, there's my fuzzy telescopic microphone, right? You can't get it too high because you'll see the fuzziness in your camera shot. I got this for Christmas from my wife. This is called a 10-inch a ring LED light for cameras, for YouTubers actually, and uh, basically uh, it's made for you know uh, female or male, female or male YouTubers that do like makeup videos on YouTube. You know what I mean? Uh, but people use them for all kinds of things. So it's a 10-inch ring, and it's got this thing hooked up to it. You, it's you can attach it to your tripod, right? And basically, you just mount your camera there. I have a uh, extension, 3.5 millimeter to the telescopic mic boom that goes into my camera. So now I've I've taken care of my uh, sound, right? Clear sound. And for dark shots, I have this ring LED. I want to show you how cool this is. I'm gonna. Here, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the okay. You can lighten the, you can dim it. You can do dim, and you can do maximum bright, right? And check this out. I'm gonna push the middle button. You can go that color, the mood, this color, that color. So it's got a few different colors. I like bright white, which is that. It's pretty cool. Uh, this was only uh, $29 or something. Pretty cool. And it came with, uh, came with a small little um, tripod, which I probably can use for, you know, shots, lower shots, you know, when I'm under tractors or something. But this is very cool. I put my camera right in there and... Uh, it, 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 it's better lighting for you know daytime or nighttime, you know. Um, instead of the battery pack here, right, you can just plug this uh, USB into your, like, phone charger module and stick it into a wall or something, you know what I mean? But it being mobile, you know, you I wanted a battery pack for it, you know, because it's really designed for people that are, like, on a desk or something indoors. You can just plug it into your computer or... You know, the wall, you know, your power strip for power. But uh, since I'm mobile, I have a, have a battery pack there. And you could just charge up the battery pack whenever, you know. So it's uh, starting to look like a little bit more of a professional uh, rig for my uh, filming, my videos, you know. So that's just to give you an idea about what I've progressed from just holding the camera with no tripod to a tripod to now a boom mic, telescopic boom mic to an LED ring light, you know. So... You know, it's a progression, you know, once you start getting better at videotaping, it's not really taping, right? It used to be taping, but now it's just videoing. That's a new word. Anyway, so I'm off to Home Depot to get some T12 LED lights, some paint for uh, my tractor, and then I have to buy some clamps to fix my um, plumbing problem. So anyway, this is what it looks like. I just have that fixture there. I think they're T12. I have to climb on a ladder and measure and pull one of them down just to see it to make sure. There are ballasts inside each of these fixtures, right? These black uh, things they 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 basically charge up uh, charge up your your power and then they shoot it once. That, that's my understanding of it. Depot and a couple of uh, 
T12 bad ones that I have to recycle. I think they take them here. If not, I'm just gonna throw them in the throw them in the trash. Agua gratis. Whatever, man. So I was talking to the guy that works here, and he actually told me that um, just replacing your fluorescent bulbs with LED bulbs is not going to get it brighter because he also was showing me the lumens. Like the fluorescent bulb lumens was 2600 lumens. The LED equivalent was like um, 1800. So actually the fluorescent gives off more light than the LEDs do. The only reason why people get LEDs is because they're uh, energy efficient and they last longer. So now I'm, I'm at a point where I'm like, I walk over here and the guy was showing me and I'm like, wow. Look at this one. So this one, I mean, I could barely look at it without without squinting, you know, because it's so damn bright. But uh, I know you can't see it, but look here, I'm gonna try to get it, get you there because it's so bright. Oh, so, son of a bitch. It's Home Depot. You figure if this is Home Depot, you shouldn't have leaks when it rains, you know what I mean? Uh, anyway, so uh, here. It's a hundred dollars for this one, but it's eighteen thousand lumens. Holy, that'll do. If I just get that light and attach it to my rafters in my garage, that'll be ample light for sure. But that's like, damn, that is so bright. But I don't know about spending a hundred dollars, man. Then you got these work lights over here. 7,000 lumen multi-directional LED tripod work light. That's kind of cool. Got the 10,000 lumen twin head work light here. That's cool too. But that's 125 bucks. I don't think I want to spend that kind of money for this. I'm going to have to reassess my options. So I'm probably not going to get lights today after all. So here are the T12 LED bulbs. It's a two-pack and they're $20. So if you look at the lumens, right? 2,000 lumens for the LED. And here is a direct replacement Philips Bright White F40 T12s, which is what I need. It's a two-pack for ten twenty-five, so it's half the price, right? Look at the lumens. The lumens is twenty-six hundred. So the guy was telling me how the fluorescent is actually brighter than the LEDs. The only difference is the LEDs save energy. That's it. So I guess I'm just gonna buy these again, you know. So I think what I'm gonna do is I just asked that guy again, the Home Depot guy, and he told me that so. The bright white is technically not that bright because it's more of a yellowish spectrum, right? If you look at the cool temperature, it's 3000 K, okay? This uh, cool white here is 4100 K. This Philips Daylight is 5000 K. He says the more um, cool temperature, color temperature it is, the more whiter it is. I want it as white as possible. So then here, this one here is an F uh, T12 also, and this is 6500K. This is as closest to the white spectrum as you can get, so that's what I want. I want as bright as possible. So 6500K, with even though the 2325 lumens is not as high as the other one, which is 2600 lumens, I do want as bright as possible. So 6500 is probably what I'm going to go with. And it's a two-pack here, and it's only $10 for a two-pack. I'm just going to try this in my basement first. So I'm gonna get I'm gonna get this one. T12, 40 watts, 2325 uh, lumens, 6500 K. Yeah, I'm gonna try this in my basement and see how much brighter it is to the uh, existing bulbs.
This is like exactly what I need. Here we go. Quick color, gloss black, 98 cents. Bet. My favorite sunrise red gloss. That looks kind of like it. But then this looks better. Self-checkout lines, that's all they have here. No human beings anymore. Fourth Industrial Revolution headed your way. Got my coupler, four can spray paint, and my bulbs. So, uh, there's two in there, okay? I put the new one on the right. And, uh, honestly, I mean, what you guys could see, you guys can't tell the difference, but um, I see it not necessarily brighter, but it's definitely more whiter than, uh, than the other one. I'm going to switch out the other one. So after a few minutes of warming up, it does look brighter than that one. So the lumens and the color temperature does matter in, in terms of making it brighter. All right, that's cool. So now I'm recording with my new setup, you know, the ring, the ring light, you know, the LED ring light. And I've uh, hooked up my uh, micro telescopic boom mic. It's now to the side. I had like this bolt, whatever. It looks pretty cool. Um, so anyway, I, was, I just took the uh, battery from my van, from the winch, put it back in here. But then I thought, I remember MTDs, the solenoid is back here, so I shouldn't put the battery in yet because I want to see if the solenoids may be busted, you know? So I was wrong. The solenoid is not here, but it's there. I love it how they put the solenoid in a nice, convenient spot. Uh, now that I know the solenoid is there, I'm going to connect the battery to it, and then I'm going to try to jump it from there to see if the solenoid is... if it jumps. You know what I'm saying? If it jumps, then I know that, um, that the solenoid probably works, uh, or it doesn't work, but the trigger is... there's something up with the trigger, you know? So what I figured out is, actually... The solenoid is not here. It's actually here. Okay? So there's an access panel that I could take out so I can have better access. And the only way I could test it is to still put the battery back in. Because i got to connect the battery no matter what. You know? So I'm going to put the battery on now. Because uh, you need a battery to test the solenoid. And you can't put the battery in here to test the solenoid um, if you can't access the solenoid to test it, you know? So it's like a double-edged sword. So I'm going to put the battery in, connect it, take the panel in the front out so I can access the solenoid and test it. So I'm going to put these uh, terminals on. Got the negative on. It's usually a 7 16th nut. Tightening the positive now. Loosen the two Phillips screws here that holds this access panel there. Uh, it's hard to get to because the seat, which by the way, the seat does not belong on this uh, tractor. But uh, it's a nice seat, though, but it's in the way of anything, so I, you, know, you have to do it at, at a curve. Remove this uh, little knob here, and the access panel will come off. There you go. The access panel. 
And now I have complete access to the solenoid. You can actually see it. You can see it pretty good too. So, uh, as long as you touch the two contacts together, the engine should crank. So I'm just going to try to touch it together. Uh, I can see that these are, it's a four post solenoid. There we go. You guys heard that? Cranks. So, um, I'm going to get my multimeter out and I'm going to look at this, uh, it's not the black wire, it'll be this um, red wire here. This red wire is supposed to be the trigger right here. So I'm going to put a multimeter to it and turn this key and see if I get 12.5 volts going to that. Uh, Okay, so I'm making some progress here. Uh, look at this multimeter, okay? You guys see that? All right, you, you can see it. All right, so look, uh, so it, the, this, these old switches, they don't have the letters on there. You know, the S, M, uh, G, B, S, and all those letters that tell you what's the solenoid, what's the magneto, what's ground, what's lights, and all that. Doesn't have it there, these old ones, right? So uh, basically, you, you, you always think that red is power. So I'm just sticking this red prong into the red, black to the engine block, nothing, right? So this red wire apparently is not power. So I'm going to go to the next one, which is uh, this red one that has a white stripe. A okay, red one with a white stripe. Look what it says. 12.46. So that's constant 12 volts. All right. So we found that. Right next to it is an orange one. Actually, the orange one is on the bottom. Okay. So watch. So it's nothing, right? But I'm going to turn the key as if I'm starting it. And we get 12.4547 volts when I turn the key. So I'm turning the key now. And I'm getting 12.46 volts. So I know that the orange wire in here is the trigger wire to shoot electricity to the solenoid. So what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, try to find the, and trace this orange wire to somewhere, right? And uh, usually it'll, this orange wire will go through the, the entire circuit of seat safety switches, PTO switch, uh, brake switch, all the safety switches. One of those safety switches is either gone, because I know it's not on here, right? And uh, the the brake switch, I, I don't know if it works, you know, you have no idea, you know, you have no idea what this thing has gone through. So the best way to test it is to take, tap into this wire here, right? I'm just going to cut this orange wire for God's sakes. I'm just going to cut it, right? Attach my own wire, right? And take it directly to the solenoid. And if it cranks, it means the solenoid is good. So from my bin of spaghetti here, I have thousands of wiring harnesses. And basically, this, this orange wire was stuck in there like that, right? So I just took a really small flathead screwdriver, stuck it in there, pulled this part out. I'm staying, I'm staying with the orange theme so I don't get confused. So I've got a nice long orange wire, and this thing is made so that it could go right into, you know, one of those modules. So what I'm doing now is I just took the harness off, and this orange wire... I'm going to stick this in there. I'm pulling the orange wire out. Or like they say in Canada, oh. And uh, I'm going to shove this one in there. Like that, right? I'm going to put the switch back on again, so now I know that this orange, this orange wire now is, is my own orange trigger wire, okay? So my own orange trigger wire, I'm gonna splice the end here when it works. Oh, man. 
Okay. So look, this orange wire now should have 12 volts going directly to the trigger. So I'm gonna ground this. I know it's really it's really tough for me to do this. Really tough. To hold this and ground it and turn the key. Crazy. Aha! Uh -huh. It does work. So I know that when I turn the key, this orange wire has 12 volts. So I'm gonna take this wire and connect it to that trigger wire. Okay, so uh, I found this yellow wire here. It has the, uh, this is actually not good because look, it's kind of spliced over here. Just gonna have to be shorter, that's all. So anyway, anyway, I just needed this tab, all right? So this has got a tab that goes easily to the to the uh, solenoid tab. So I don't have to keep splicing and stuff, you know what I mean? So I only want to try to make it as stock as possible. So look, I don't know if this will reach, will this reach? Yeah, that'll reach. Okay, so look, I'm just gonna... So now I'm confusing myself. I've got orange into yellow. So yellow is gonna be my um, direct bypass right to the solenoid okay 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 All right. okay I'm just doing this for testing I'm gonna route it better later so this is we're just testing to see if the um, just to see if the solenoid works okay if this cranks right now I don't have to sit there I don't have to step on the brake I don't have to do anything because this is a trigger directly to the uh, um, engine so if it cranks, the solenoid works, and we're good to go. Here we go. Hey, hey! The solenoid works. So what it was is, uh, one of the safety switches, or all of them, were bad or disconnected, which is the reason why it didn't start uh, when you went through their spaghetti. When you make your own spaghetti right here, right, you're bypassing all the switches. This is a direct... Um, current straight to your solenoid which starts your engine no matter what so you know that the solenoid is good all right the ground is good this is it i've we have just uh I, we are we can now crank this now we're getting so close now so i know i know you guys don't like uh, a lot of people don't like um electrical uh believe me i don't like electrical either but um I've, I've, I've learned this stuff on my own, how to bypass stuff, you know, and it, it's really helpful. So now I'm just going to button up these wires here. So I just put some black electric tape through here. I'm going to route this inside. to the trigger here. the route the uh, thing it fell down so the parking brake lever all the way down I had to open this up again put it back on the knob back on so now we've basically just bypassed all the safety switches the uh, PTO the brake the seat I don't even think the seat had anything attached to it anyway you know what I'm saying but this is not the original seat. So this is what happens when you get like a tractor that you don't know anything about, you know, because somebody screwed with it. So if somebody screwed with it, you have no idea. Uh, that's why you sometimes have to, you know, hardwire everything on your own, you know. Um, just so that this part doesn't touch anything. We're not going to need this orange wire at all. I'm just going to have to clip it so that this metal part doesn't touch anything metal. And uh, I'll keep that for when I bypass another one. You know, um, 
So here, I'm going to put the ignition switch back on again. So now remember, everything is bypassed. You turn this key, that engine will turn, you know? I'm going to put the ignition switch back on again. I'm left-handed, so I can't do anything with my left hand. That's right. I can't even do that with my left hand. I'll hurt myself. Hit myself in the face or something. You guys like that one, huh? That was pretty good. I've used that before. Can you tell? <laughs> mm -hmm. Always having a little fun here at Mowers and Blowers. It's uh, entertainment. Not exactly uh, kids entertainment, but it's uh, adult entertainment. We're all adults, even though I have uh, I have some kids that do watch my show. I call it a show now. Isn't that hysterical? All right, so look, let's uh, stick this key in here again, right? We buttoned everything up. Damn, this key. All right, ready? Does it crank? It sure does, but we've got no Earl in there, so I'm not going to crank it any more than that, you know. Um, I'm going to put some Earl in it now. Check the dipstick, see if there's any Earl in there. There is barely any, if any at all. Um, let's just uh, unplug this and see. definitely no Earl, we'll see. Got this open and nothing's coming out. This is a hinky type of, uh, you know, closure. Not very reliable. All right, I'm going to put some Earl in there now. So I've got like about a half or maybe three quarters of uh, SAE 30 plus from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. Just going to dump this entire container in there and then top it off as I check the levels after it settles. Because, um, you know, with uh, the oil is pretty thick and if you try to pour too much, it'll uh, take some time for it to settle all the way to the bottom before you take readings to be uh, as accurate as you can. So uh, I just checked it. It's up to the ad line. I'm just going to crank it a little bit and see what happens. Of course, it's not going to start. As a matter of fact, it doesn't even seem like it. Uh, the end. The uh, it's starting very well. You know, it's slow. I'm going to take the hood off. You know why? Because I have a feeling that I have to get in here. And why do I feel that? I'll tell you as soon as I figure out how to get this damn hood off. Okay, it just comes off. Not that easy, but kind of easy. So why did I want to take the hood off? Well, when I was um, just looking down there, right, I saw some leaves in there. So when you see some leaves in there, right, you get suspicious. And the suspicion is that you might have a rat's nest in there. That's the suspicion. And as you can see, there's a lot of uh, grass and stuff in there. See that? 
So that's evidence there of a rat's nest. So I'm going to have to take this engine cover off and see what we have. There's four 3 8 bolts that hold that on. And then I might as well take this off too. Half inch. This is the guard for the starter gear. Another one, half inch, a quarter inch, sorry, holds the, get ready, wait for it, holds the dipstick. Dipstick? Cletus, you dipstick! Cletus, you know what you are, you're a dipstick, a 14 carat dipstick! So that one holds the dipstick there. So it's loose, let's lift it up and see, will I be lucky enough to get a mouse? I love wildlife. Whoa, that's a good one. It's not a cheap one. That's a good one. That's a good nest. So I've uh, stuffed a rag into the uh, mouth leading to the carburetor of the air cleaner so that uh, you know, none of that deb debris gets into that area, you know? It's got like this black, um, you know what this is? This is that, uh, that black stuff you put over your lawn when you don't want sun to shine through it and uh, grass to grow there, you know? I'm always running all over that stuff myself, you know? No mouse. I never get any mice. I mean, I've gotten a few, but I mean, where do they go? You know, do they just leave their homes like that. I don't really. I haven't left my house in a while. So I just clean this up because um, you know these fins has got to be clear. If they're not clear, it'll overheat. And if they overheat, your your earl viscosity will decrease not give you full engine protection cause a lot of friction you know I'm gonna fire up my uh, fire up my um, you know my uh, you know my air compressor and blow that out a little bit <laughs> gotta cover my mouth Dudes, check that out. Clean, man. Hey. So this thing has like ass gas in it, right? And uh, it's got like part of the cap that's inside. So uh, I'd like to take the gas tank off and drain it and uh, clean it out. Uh, put a fuel filter on. Uh, sorry, there is already a fuel filter. But there's no fuel shutoff switch, which I, which I think was a culprit of the guy having problems in the first place, so I'm going to put a fuel shut off uh, when I'm ready to do that. But right now, I, I'd like to, I'm kind of curious as to getting this thing started. Um, I don't know why the battery doesn't seem like it's charging very well, or doesn't seem like it's uh, cranking very fast, um, because it's a new battery, you know? So here we go, I'm going to set it on. Oh, is there a choke? I think it's 
get the gas, you know. I'm gonna check for spark. This has got one of those E3 um, spark plugs where it has like two prongs where you can see two sparks. I kind of like them. It does give you a lot of spark. So let's see if we can use spark. Let's take that out. Put that like around here. Crank it and see if we get any spark. Plenty of spark. Did you guys see that? Got you close now. You can see spark. Could just spray some carb cleaner in there. I'm using a uh, multi-purpose parts cleaner and degreaser from my friends over at Lucas Oil. Love this stuff. Let's squeeze some in the uh, oh, it's choke, choke is on. I feel it. And that goes through. Put the choke back on again. Let's see if we uh, get a little bit of uh, ignition here. Ignition. Hey, we got a little bit there, guys. All right, well, we, we got a little bit. You guys saw it. It turned over a little bit, right? So I think it has something to do with the ass gas or uh, something else in the carburetor or something like that. But we do know that... Uh, it does start, it does crank, and it does turn over light, slightly. So uh, what we did today, uh, we actually did pretty pretty much, considering I wasn't going to work on this at all today, you know what I mean? But uh, I showed you my new camera rig, right, on how to YouTube. Ooh, yeah, I might as well, uh, I might as well turn this on for you guys too, you know, uh, the lights. Awesome. Yeah. So I so, showed you my uh, camera rig for YouTubing, you know, the tripod that I use, it uh, works great. I was uh, going to change the lights up there, but then I, I just bought higher color temperature bulbs with higher lumens. And, uh, you know, it's brighter, but it's not really, really bright, you know what I mean? It's not like outside, but it's pretty bright. It's okay. Um, I changed some lights, um, fixed my plumbing problem, you got to fix the pl plumbing problems, you know. So while I didn't think I was going to have time to do this, uh, because I didn't get new light fixtures, I just changed a couple of bulbs, it didn't take that long, so I had plenty of time to work on this. Uh, so we put the battery back in there, we troubleshooted the solenoid and uh, the ignition switch, we took it out, I multimetered all the circuits to see which one was uh, full-time 12 volts, which one was switched 12 volts, right? And, um, and which one was pulse 12 volts? Pulse 12 volts is the ignition. When you turn it, it triggers the solenoid to shoot up that plunger that makes the contact between the, the two um, heavy gauge positive red wire connection to the starter um, motor. So that we ran the uh, a direct wire from the, after we found out which one was the solenoid or starter tab on the ignition switch, we ran our own wire through it directly to the trigger on the solenoid, which means that we have now bypassed the PTO switch, the brake switch, and the seat safety switch. So those three switches we bypassed all together because that was the cause of it not starting. So we have a wire running directly to the solenoid, you're always gonna get a start, you know? Uh, so we did that. Engine cranks, and we just got it to start after checking for spark and shooting some uh, starter fluid all the way through the uh, mouth of the carburetor itself. So the reason why it didn't start before is because this ass gas and some kind of contamination in the carburetor probably. So we bypassed that by shooting fluid directly into the carb, into the intake manifold, and it, it, it 
it, it turned over for like a second or two. So we know that the engine does start and nothing else is busted, whatever. Uh, we had a rat's nest in there. We cleaned that out properly. And uh, now it's nice and clean. Um, tomorrow's episode, which will be part, really part two of this uh, Cub Cadet MTD uh, that I got for 40 bucks. Um, episode two will entail draining the gas tank, cleaning the carb, and then working out why on the bottom, working out the um, why the blades turn along with the engine running. As a matter of fact, before when I was cranking before, the blades were turning. So actually in my next episode, probably tomorrow, I'm actually going to take the um, mower deck belt off the pulley so that uh, it, there's no resistance onto the engine while we're trying to start it, you know what I mean? Once I get the engine started and it worked out all right, then I'll work on the mower deck. But if I'm cranking the engine and the blades are turning already, that's going to impede the engine starting, you know what I mean? Which is why it was cranking so slow, because the belt is on there, you know what I mean? You don't want the belt on there while you're cranking. Um, when the engine's running at top speed, then you could engage the belts, you know, which is ideal. But if you're just trying to start it, you don't want that kind of friction and resistance on the uh, crankshaft to start an engine. So I'm going to disconnect the... Uh, we just try to pull the mower deck belt off of the, the crankshaft pulley, and then we could troubleshoot the engine a little bit and make sure it, it gets a, a fair try at starting, you know. But um, ask gas, carburetor, fuel lines, all tomorrow. Ooh, that's good. I'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey guys, support my channel. Also, follow me on Instagram at Mowers Blowers. Check out my website, MowersBlowers.com. See you guys on my next project. Have a great day.